So to drill the pin blanks, I like to use this pin press centering vise. Lined up on the drill press, perfectly centered under the bit, whatever size blank, just locked in place. Makes pretty quick work centering up each blank, no matter what size it is, or if they're not perfectly straight. The bits do tend to wander a little bit, so I find it's best to just peck, just drill a little bit and back off, let the shavings clear. It tends to minimize how much the drill bit wanders. If you don't want to invest in a centering vise, just a simple hand screw will hold the blank and mark the center. You can drill it just the same on the drill press. Through both ends. If you prefer, you can use the lathe to drill your blanks. These are pin blank drilling jaws available for most chucks. Just clamp the blank in the two jaws. Use a drill chuck in the tailstock. And using the quill, drill the blank. And then that one's ready to glue the brass tube in. So with the holes drilled in the blank, it's time to glue in the brass tube. I like to rough these up with a little bit of sandpaper, even if they, I've noticed some of the newer ones come pre-scratched. I like to get any oxidation off of there. Just some real coarse sandpaper. Then a little bit of CA glue. This is some medium CA glue. I'm gonna do three thin lines about halfway on the bottom end of the blank. Then I'm gonna insert it into the blank, twisting it as I go in and out. and then I'll let that dry. So with the tube glued in place, we want to trim the ends. Use a barrel trimmer, cleans out any glue that might have gotten down in the brass tube. And it trims the end of the blank flush with the brass tube. Flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. As soon as the brass is shiny, you just touched it. Now it's ready to turn. So with the pin mandrel mounted in the headstock, it's important to support the tailstock end. There's a small hole in the end of the mandrel for a live center. If your live center looks like this, you'll need to replace it with a 60 degree cone like this. The problem with a lot of live centers is that they're designed for wood with a very small point. The angle on that point is much smaller than the 60 degree angle on the hole on the end of this mandrel. It's important to prevent wear on the end of that mandrel that the live center match that hole exactly 60 degrees. Failure to do that will result in wear between the mandrel 
and the live center point, eventually creating excess heat and breaking the tip of the live center off and welding itself into the end of the mandrel. So mounting the blanks, we'll take the nut off the end. Slide these bushings back. Now you usually only need three bushings. I like to use an extra one on each end just to give me extra room from being up close to the mandrel and close to the nut on the other end. So there's a bushing on the top end, the blank, a middle bushing, the bottom blank, another bushing, and once again, like I said, I like to use an extra one just to move this nut out away from the blank a little bit, and then tighten the nut in place to press the two blanks together. This mounts the two blanks securely on the mandrel, then use the live center to support the end of the mandrel. Switch the lathe on. Because this is a small diameter, you can turn the lathe pretty much as fast as you'd like. I like to use somewhere around 2,000 RPMs, but any speed is appropriate. Now I'm just going to use a spindle roughing gouge, shape the blanks, bring them down to size, and for the finished cuts. Most pins you can turn with just a spindle roughing gouge. Flip the gouge over and work up closer. Once I get one rough down most of the way, I like to go back to the other one and rough it down most of the way, and then do my finish cuts later. Now it's real common to get that vibration a lot of times. What I prefer to do is use my fingers on the back side where they're safe if anything catches, it's going to pull my hand away, just like this. But I can use my fingers along the back side, my thumb to press down over the top of the tool. And really cut down on that vibration. May not always be necessary, but I do like to use it. It's a, small thin mandrel and it does flex a little bit in the middle. Now the bushings are an indication of the finished diameters at the ends. Those are to match the components that will be pressed in later. But because these bushings wear over time, either by accidental touching of the tool or by sandpaper, I like to measure. So I like to use calipers. I like to take one of the actual components that will be pressed in. And if they're different diameters, you'll need to measure each point. The slimline pin, all the components where they press into the pin are all the same diameter. And it's about 27 60 fourths. So again, the bushings I can use as a reference so with the calipers, I can get a better gauge of just how much still needs to come off. Just about a 32nd of an inch there. A little bit less there. About a 32nd. About a 32nd on that end. So with about a 32nd of an inch to come off, 
Again, I like to use my fingers on the back side just to support that mandrel, keep it from flexing. Just make some light cuts. I also like to use just a small straight edge. At least on these pin blinks, I like them to be completely straight. So it's helpful to have a small straight edge to ensure that they are straight. But feel free to shape them however you like. Maybe one more light pass here. Looks pretty good. So then I can quickly sand them right on the lathe. Normally I would start with probably 220. These were real nice and smooth. So I'm starting with 320. I don't want to have to try to remove those scratches unless I absolutely have to. So start as fine as I possibly can. And I do try not to sand. I do try not to sand the bushings. But as you can see, you do inevitably end up sanding them a little bit. And that's why I don't like to use them as an absolute size reference. They're just a gauge. And after the first grid, I'll stop and make sure that I got rid of any tool marks. And I did, so I can just progress through the grits. Now for a finish, I like to use Mylan's Friction Polish. You can finish with whatever you choose. And you can do finishing off the lathe if you prefer. But for the Friction Polish, I find that it works well to get a liberal amount wiped on quickly by hand. just with a soft paper towel, and then use a dry, clean, soft paper towel. Quickly switch to a clean spot on the cloth, or paper, never use cloth on the lathe here. But switching to a clean spot, spot ensures that you don't get dried finish that's scratching the surface of the wood. And this does dry with friction, so you may speed the lathe up. Looks good. Well, it's sanded and finished. Go ahead and remove it from the mandrel, just back the tailstock off, remove the nut and the bushings. And if you're doing more than one of these, or if you're going to do finishing off the lathe, I find it's real helpful to use some pipe cleaners. They make a nice way to store the blanks, and you still know where your joint line is when you go to assemble it. 
And so you can have several of these lined up and, and assemble them all at once if you're doing more than one. So with all the components laid out here, I've got the barrels that I turned. I know that this is the center joint between the two and this was the tip here. So I'm gonna start with that and the tip. Just press that into that brass tube slightly. And I'm gonna use a vise here with some soft jaws just to press that tip component into the bottom end of the brass tube. Just squeeze it in until it's tight. So you can continue pressing the components together with a bench vise like this. If you have a lot of pins that you're doing, a pin press does make pretty quick work of it. Just secure it on the bench there. And the next component is the mechanism. The brass end goes in first. and then just press. Usually about where that line is in the silver is the correct depth, but you wanna make sure that it's right. So I stop, insert the mechanism just a little bit further, take that back out and press it just a tiny bit more. Perfect. And there's a ring that slides over that. It's a little tight. And then the upper barrel, you can use the pin press as well. You can use the vise, or you can use the low tech method. Just a little clamp. Take the top barrel, the cap, clip, start that together like that. Just like that. Then insert the, the uh, ink into the mechanism. Two halves push together. And if you look carefully, you can line up the grain by twisting it around. 